Thank you for joining me this afternoon. It's a G Sport 15 award special, and I have a squash of orange here just to raise the glass to all of you. Congratulations on being nominees. Congratulations, G Sport, on championing women's sport in the country. So I'll start with you, Zanele. Um, how has it been, you know, just since the announcement of the shortlist, then Saturday up until now, how has it been? You can unmute yourself, it's fine. Hi, hi, Mots. Hi, hi, Tabi. Uh, congratulations, ladies. Simnan. <laughs> 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 um it's been it's been i mean I, I was so anxious you know to for for the first of august when the um the finalists were going to be announced cuz i mean i also didn't know you know i was just a surprise i was i was surprised when i was just as surprised as if i was expecting my name to be to be on that list you know um i think it's it's exciting and it's lovely to see new names you know, new faces, new names. Uh, I think that also speaks to the growth of, of the G-Sport uh, Awards and speaks to, you know, how um, the public is literally going out and doing their research and, and, and going to find the women who are not maybe seen every day on TV, but are doing great and amazing things, you know, in little corners and spaces that maybe media, um, TV can't, can't, can't access. And um, I did say that the judges were going to have their work cut out for them because those nominees here, it was like, you know, cream of the crop, you know, um, women who are just groundbreakers and barrier breakers and ceiling shatters, uh, shatterers. So I think um, the, the finalists are, it's, it's a diverse group. It's, it's, it's brilliant in each, in, in each category. And yeah, so the public now must vote. And then, yeah, then we look forward to the announcement on the 31st of August. Um, you're right. Also, I've, I've seen that also looking at the additional categories as well, the, um, the African woman as well, you know, uh, the global woman as well. And also looking at the category that's sort of um, being bigger in dominating rugby as well, sort of looked more on the transformation side as well. You know, how has that been as well for G Sports? In terms of the adding the new categories, yeah, I think I think as 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 I said earlier, you know, we're speaking to 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 the growth of G Sport. I thought the inclusion of the of the global and the African women category is something very special. Uh, it speaks to women in sport uh, doing amazing things and being recognised in 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 the continent and also in the world. I mean, if you look at that uh, global women award, we've got Umaba Lacha there who is, as a finalist, who is our Springbok um, uh, women's rugby captain. She's just literally just bursting to the scene and she's just taking over, you know, uh, and, and she's being recognized not only in South Africa, but even in the world. And that's how, that's the kind of groundbreaking stuff that she's doing, being the first rugby woman to, to get an international contract, you know. So she's opening doors for many more to come, to come after her. And we hope you're going to see more of that looking at some of the sports like last year you had the, the, the netball world cup and the spa proteus doing well banyana banyana making a debut there and i see they're also nominated even coach desri is nominated as well the participation of south african women on the global scale as well has it also made it a little bit trickier or exciting perhaps for g sport this year very exciting very exciting i mean there was a there was a week where because uh, I follow Amanda Jamin on social media and um, she was posting literally almost like every day that there's a, 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 a Banyana Banyana athlete getting an international contract. And I was just like, whoa, what's going on? You know, um, and it's so great to have our girls being recognized internationally. And I just think that that's, it's, it's time that South Africa recognizes the gems that they have and the wealth that they have, you know, in, in, in our girls. And I hope that this momentum doesn't sort of decrease and drop and it's time for women's soccer to just move to the next ne next level you know and and i mean i think our girls are doing so much better than the boys but i will not be controversial i'll just leave it there um uh, you know and, and and all that support that's going into into men's soccer must be now going to to our girls you know 
um, they really find the flag high. And I was just like, whoa, what's going on? What, what did I miss? You know, and, and, uh, and it's unfortunate that we haven't, they haven't played because of, of, the, of, the, of the pandemic here in South Africa, you know. So, um, but it's, it's great. And things are just, um, just moving such a, in, in such a brilliant direction and it's happening so fast. And G-Sport is now the platform that exposes those kind of things, you know recognizes that kind of excellence and that brilliance that uh, our women are, are doing up there. Danela, I see your dogs are also excited. Um, I mean, the villages, the chickens could also get excited and join in the party. So we welcome every So Let's welcome Bali girls. Uh, she's just joined us. Mbali, welcome to the podcast. Mbali is a finalist in the Women on Star. You know, Matirisi, I want to speak to you now. Congratulations again. You are a winner in 2016 of this very category. Last year, you were anchoring as the Springboks did the pots. How are you yeah. feeling, you know, about your nomination this year? I know you're nominated with amazing women. I saw Andy in that, uh, in, in that category as well. Andy as well as Natalie. It's a group of great women who are, who are um, trailblazers in television. I'm excited. I always am excited when my peers recognize the work that I'm doing and celebrate it. And that's what G-Sport has always been about, you know, for uh, women together and celebrate one another. And also recognize that we're not just these beautiful ornaments wherever we are working. We are women of substance. We are intelligent. We are brilliant. We're creative. And we bring things to life in a way that no one else can you know so i'm very very excited really looking forward to this one i think because it's off of the back of such a a, a monumental moment in my career for someone who's not a first time nominee but also a winner how has you know um winning in 2016 sort of also helped in in, in your career in the last couple of years since 2016 up until now yeah the, my win in 2016 came at such a right time because I was in a very dark place, oddly enough. And um, I don't know about you, but there'll come a day in your career when you, when you start to wonder if this is what you're supposed to be doing. You'll wonder if you're on the right track. You'll wonder why you bother to wake up in the morning. You'll wonder why you're not cracking it. You're not getting the opportunities that you've been praying and praying for. And I was in that place. I was in that rut where I just felt like, oh my goodness, like, let me, let me go do accounting. I'm an accountant. I have the degree. Let me go. Um, so to be recognized like that by my peers and by women um, whose caliber in sport far surpasses my own, for them to say, Mots, we see you, Tidi, we see the work that you're doing. With CDC, you are great. For them to put me uh, in a space where my work and my worth and my value is amplified was extraordinary. And from then, it just catapulted me because I moved from next level to next level to next level. You know, so um, these awards are very important, not just for what they do in terms of your career, but I think what they do in terms of your self-confidence as well. To know that people are watching, applauding, enjoying, and crediting you for the great work that you're doing. And especially in a year where Black Lives Matter has come up a lot, and I've seen also even in the rugby space, and especially, you know, Sia Kulis is speaking up as well. And with us women, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's, it's, the, 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 the transformation subject is much bigger. It, it's for you, you are at the racial space, the gender space as well. How big of a year is this? You know, it's, it's COVID has made, the pandemic rather, has made everybody look within because um, all of our vices have been put on hold. We can't go out and party, we um, can't see our friends. So all of it has been within, and I think that's what's happening, not just on an individual level, but on, at a community level as well, in federations and in organizations. The plight of the black woman is well-documented um, in working spaces. And you know, for me, I walked in as, I suppose, a complete anomaly because no one looked like me doing what I do today, you know? But I had, to take, I had to take that space because that's what I wanted to do. I didn't really want to do anything else. I wanted to niche in a sport that no one else was, 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 was walking into, you know? And that's why representation is so important. 
I watched the Spa Pro Tears beating England in 2013 in Port Elizabeth. Um, Zan was in that game. And I imagine for a little girl that was either at the arena or watching on television to see a black woman hosting and to see black girls, black women in that team winning like that is important. That's why I'm baffled that even in 2020, we still have to have this conversation. You know, that's why I'm baffled that we're, 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 con we're having the same conversation over and over again. And Zanella's reaction is exactly how we react every single time it is oh. asked. It's just like we have been talking. We've been, we have been. We've been, talking. you know, at some point we must be actioning. And, 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 you know, I, I, I sat in this great um, um, Zoom, I think it was Yuri Ru that said it, that said, we can't celebrate progress. We have to celebrate when we reach success. Yeah. When we reach the point at which, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it, it's not like now we have more, now we have more. We need to celebrate when it's like, okay, it, it, it's so balanced, we, we don't even notice. Yeah. It's like every, the everyday thing, you know, mm -hmm. so... The plight continues, but but I'm always pained to have this conversation because I'm just like, until Nini, you know. And just to bring in Tabi Singh into this conversation, Tabi Singh is young in this industry. Um, as someone I sort of know personally of all the panelists here, you know, um, okay, just to put it out there to people that are watching, she's not here because I know her personally. <laughs> she's here because she's an outstanding woman, young woman that does well. Tabi Singh, congratulations. Um, this is your second nomination. You, you are not 10 years in this industry, like some of us, or even six years. Um, what does this nomination mean for you? I mean, you are here in the space with great women. It, it, the Radio Award, you've been, been nominated with Itu Banda, with Lebu Mutuedi as well. How does it feel for you? I mean, and for, considering how long you've been at Radio 2000 and how long you've been doing this as well. I think for me, Letabo, it just means that the work that I do is being recognized for exactly that. Um, because you say I, I've literally only been in this game for like four years. <laughs> I've been at 2004, just over a year. And for me to be able to take the risk that I took and for um, my managers to believe in that risk of me converting all my weekend bulletins at 8.30 to be women in sport focused, they saw that, um, you know what, let's give it a try. And it's working out because throughout the duration that I've done this, I've been able to speak to different women across the board about different conversations. And for me, it makes me sleep so much better at night to say that, you know what, with the platform that you have and the little three minutes that you have in your bulletin, at least you can get, um, you know, a conversation going and a conversation started. And being nominated alongside Lebo, love her, Itu, love her. Jeez, man, we're working. They are working. Bali, I'm going to bring you in. You know, a lot of times people look at women in sport. I'll speak for myself, especially that um, they'll say, like, whatever. She doesn't have style or she doesn't have that. Like, if I'm not wearing locks, she's got short hair. I wear lipstick. I love lipstick. And sometimes I even have to justify and say, guys, it's because sometimes I'm just lazy. I'd love to wear a weave, you know, really, because. And sometimes I'm like, the one that I like, I can't afford. So it's not even an issue of whatever. I can't afford it. So um, style, but I have seen you. Like, you always look absolutely gorgeous. Like, um, what does this category mean for you? Is it just an issue of the outlook or is it everything inside out? Um, firstly, hi, everyone. Please forgive my um, video. I'm having a bit of a skin reaction. So ooh, I don't want to be exposed because everybody's just looking nice. Today. <laughs> so please forgive me. Um, but yeah, um, thank you so much for inviting me onto this platform. You know, I remember <laughs> I had a conversation with Zanelli on the, on the phone. Um, uh, 
well, she was doing an interview at Vision View Sports Radio. And uh, I was kind of like nitpicking, trying to find out what is it exactly that actually goes into someone being nominated, you know, in the style category. And uh, without even giving it away, okay, but you know, Zanile, she figured it out anyway. But firstly, I was very shocked to find myself there because this year I didn't enter the awards, you know, and because I felt like, I didn't do any work worthy of entering, you know? So when uh, I got that recognition, I was very firstly surprised. I went through my Instagram. I'm like, okay, this is very interesting, you know? (laughs) And you know, on your feed, you see other people who just dress so nice, who just look absolutely amazing. But you know, Zanila said one thing. She said, it's not about the labels and the Gucci's and everything is about having your own personal sense of style, owning it, looking great in it and just being yourself. It's not about trying to be like everyone else, trying to be dripping Gucci and Louis Vuitton, but it's about exuding who you are through, you know, the way you put your style together. I'm not a person who wears skimpy things um i've never been i don't know maybe it's an insecurity thing that i had grown up with but i love feeling comfortable um it is about obviously being beautiful inside and out but i would say that what you were talking about earlier about um lipsticks and weaves and all of that i had this problem that when i got into the industry right i was still working at um at uh at uh, soweto tv And um, I always wanted it to be about my brains, um, what I can contribute and not how I look. Because a lot of the time, especially because obviously we're in this male dominated industry, you get to a a press conference or a media open day. You don't want it to be, they look at you first and then they've already made up their preconceived notions about you that, ah, oh, She's just a pretty face. Or get under head. You get what I'm saying? And so what I did intentionally for a good three, three years, I would dress down going to presses. So I would literally just wear a jean and a t-shirt so that I remove any form of distraction that would prevent me from doing my work or from being able to connect or communicate with the coach or the players and stuff like that. So it was, I always wanted to be the content, the content, the content. And um, not so long ago, um, I was part of an AIPS um, women in sports conference with journalists and speakers from all over the world. And one of the ladies, um, I think it was uh, uh, Donna, she said, listen, because we are in a male dominated industry, a lot of the time you'll find that you are the only woman there. So you know what? Wear the brightest clothes, stand out. Wear that pink and bright lipstick, stand out. Can we cheers to standing out? Yeah, she's like, she's like, because think about this. You are in a mix zone. You just came out of a a match. It's hectic at the back. You're in a mix zone. Players are coming out. Coaches are coming out. There's a lot of journalists. Of course, um, if you are not known, especially, and if you're like only female, only two, you need a form, you need a way to stand out, to attract that coach or that player to come to you. And so she said, wear your highest heels if you have to, wear your brightest and most beautiful clothes if you have to, wear that brightest lipstick, because why? We are tired of always trying to blend in with males. We are not males. Yes, we are in this industry. We are all journalists. It's not about male, female, but you need to represent the best version of you because the minute you open your mouth you tell the world who you are and so you cannot diminish your light and who you are because you 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 don't want people to have preconceived uh, opinions notions about you but even when you decide you want to stand out they will have those opinions anyway So what is the point of you dimming your light in the first place? So be the best you can be, shine, stand out, be an example and a representation of the kind of female who goes into the field. Men go in Kadi Kampus, and we kick with Bawaza and we do an amazing job while, while we are representing. 
And Teresa is doing an amazing job in rugby and she's looking hella amazing doing it in her heels, in her natural hair, whatever she wants to rock. She looks good in it. And you know, and the thing is when you feel confident in who you are, the way you deliver your content or however you, you deliver the show or the rugby game, it will show, it will come out. So I think that the time is gone for us to stop trying to make, to beg the males, I guess, the guys to see us as equals or see us as people who are worthy because um, we are giving them so much power as if they are doorkeepers. You know, I don't believe I can give a human so much power over me. And so um, I honestly believe that, look, stand out, be amazing, and look good while doing it. Because certainly when you're climbing your way to the top, you want to look amazing as you are doing it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's, yeah, I think I've said I a mouthful. <laughs> no, I, no, it's not even a mouthful. I think like some of the things you're saying, I'm like, why can I, can't I articulate like that? Because maybe it's also <laughs> part of your style as well, you know, how you articulate things. So back to Zanel. Zanel, it's year 15 of, 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 of G Sports. I mean, you have been here as a netball player, you know, besides now being part of G Sport as well, you know, um, with, with what G Sport has been doing throughout the years. Um, this year, the hashtag, um, Chimas, the, the kind of hashtag, you know, yes, on your success, it, it almost sounds like what Bali is saying as well. It, is that the hashtag we're going with and what has also a reflection of the year that it has been for women's sports in the country? Yeah, thanks. It's just, just to go back to Glenogan Bali, because I won the G-Star style... G Sport, G Star, G Sport Style Star Award. I was also surprised how I even got there, you know, because I mean I've got locks and I, I just, I just, I just do me, you know, and I, and I thought it was about you gotta look a certain way. I don't have weaves, I don't do long nails, I don't he heals. It will be once in a while type of thing. So it is really just being about you. But I love the fact that she's understood, but um, stand out, be you. So don't dim your light. Don't dim yourself. Don't want to blend in. We just don't have time for that. And, and it also speaks to the theme of G Sport. It said last year, um, no apology for my success. You know, because we as women, when we are brilliant, we tend to just be like, oh, actually, no, no. Why are you apologizing? Why don't you recognize? Why don't you validate yourself? Why don't you acknowledge that? Yes, I am actually kicking ass. You know, um, now this year we're saying, you know, she owns her success. It's like taking it in. It's mine. You know, I am doing this. Listen, guys, Motsi DC doesn't just, wasn't just put this, okay, where now you run with the rugby as a black face and as a woman. And then she's working effing hard. She's working flipping hard to, 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 to deliver excellence. You understand? But, Okay, bring, I can do this, you know? And she's adding her flavor and she's blowing those men out of the water, actually. I'm sorry to say, but mm, okay, you know? And that's it. She's brilliant. Um, she must be able to say it. It's, enough, it's not enough for us to say it. She must say it for herself first. You know, it's, I, I take it to a point of also saying, um, I always say to my girls, when I was a player, some, I had teammates who wanted the coach to say to them, yo, you had a good game today. Whether my coach said it to me or not, I told myself, girl, you were on fire today. You know, <laughs> that's just, I that's like that. I'm... I do. I like it. I do. <laughs> I do. You know, it's, otherwise you will wait forever for people to say, well done, or you're doing well. And remember also amongst us as women, we also have this thing of pulling each other down as if we don't want to acknowledge each other's success. Mm. And that needs to stop, you know? So mm. for as long as you're waiting for someone to say to you, geez, Zanele, you're doing well, whatever, you might never hear it. So validate yourself, affirm yourself, acknowledge, because you're not 
th these things are not landing on your lap. You actually putting effort and sacrifice, but is super. Um, Asha has joined us. Um, let's welcome Asha, uh, a nominee in the African Woman in Sports. Congratulations, Asha. Thank you so much for finally joining us. Yes, um, another powerhouse. Asha, how, what does this nomination mean for you? I mean, I'm, you've been in like, what's that? Let me read my notes. 2019 Most Influential Young African. In 2020, you're here as a G-Spot finalist. Um, one of the only awards that recognize women's work. Now they're going global, they're going continental, and you are part of that journey. What does this mean for you? Um, first of all, thank you so much, Gia uh, Bonga. I hope I, I got that right. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's really a pleasure, first of all, to uh, be here and, and you know, share the same space with amazing people um, on the panel. It, it's really an honor um, that we have a space where we can feel comfortable, where we're celebrating each other, where we are sharing um, you know, our, our success stories and also really sometimes our challenges and, and learning from each other. So it means so much for me um, to be uh, nominated and of course I've always you know uh, followed uh, what has been happening um, I think uh, I know uh, Busi Siwe uh, I met her at the Kosafa Women's Championship in Port Elizabeth two years ago and and you know just to see someone like that um, grow and, and be awarded and also really for her efforts um, uh, you know going and being the FIFA reporter for Banyana Banyana so it, it, I'm so excited I hope <laughs> I didn't say too much it's not too much. Was this also a nominee um, in Women in Print for this year, mm -hmm. and she's also a previous winner. Busi is a trailblazer. Um, the only reason we did not invite her is that she was part of the uh, of our team talk last week when we were discussing something else. You know, so also mm -hmm. as, as as part of things that we are learning from the bigger community of women and especially from Cass at G Sport is that we all have to give each other the platform, share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. And you know, she is a trailblazer. She's somebody that I think most of us look up to, who we are so proud of as well. So uh, I just wanna bring in the issue that, you know, with the bigger the platform, um, incorporating younger girls, Mutidisi, in, in, in a space like yours, that's still just fairly, you know, I know that a lot of the sporting space is still very much dominated by men. You know, issues of mentoring, does this award also, you know, highlight in that matter to say we can see a young and upcoming um, rugby anchors, rugby female reporters as well? Well, so um, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Are you asking me? Or? Yeah, I like this. Let's Mutiliti go first, then you can go after she does. Thank you. Sorry about that, Asha. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, it's actually to Zan's point earlier, where she was speaking about how the, the awards every single year, there's always these new names that are popping up, uh, these new faces, new young women that are coming into the space, you know, and um, doing really, really great things. And that is really one of the importance of the G Sports Awards, is that even the girls that are not necessarily getting um, a claim at the so-called highest level, have a platform where their work can be showcased and where their names are known you know that's also important because we we can't wait for the applause Zan is right we can't wait for the validation but it's awesome when a, a platform like this for women and by women can be like we are seven girl and we see you and you may be 22 but we've got you and we see your work i mean i started when i was 19. If I, if, if, if I knew, of, I would have clung to G-Sport at 19. Because you need that kind of mentoring. You need that kind of backing um, as well. And these are people who understand intrinsically what you go through in the space. Because they have been through all that you will either go through or have gone through as well. So even when you're sharing your battle, your battle stories, the, the thread is so, so similar. Um, I hope to also keep opening the door um, to young people. 
I try and share my knowledge and my wisdom as much as I can and to keep sending the elevator down. I think in this in 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 the particular sport I work in, it's very, very difficult. And and COVID is a major uh interruption as well, because I would have loved to, you know, have people come and shadow me. That's what I wanted to do this year, for you to come in and sit and watch me over days preparing for a game or um, sit with me in studio and watch how I prepare and execute my radio show. Um, so unfortunately, that inter that's been an interruption to those kinds of plans, um, but I'm hoping that my team and I can come up with something that we can do on digital platforms. But mentoring is very important because young women, we don't want them to fall into the same, um, um, patterns or battles the way we did and to have to fight the same demons, you know, it should be easier for them because we've come through. So it should, whoever's coming behind me, it needs to be just a little bit easier. They need to duck a little less, you know, they need to dodge a little less, you know, cause I've done my work in clearing almost all the debris. That's very important for me. So yeah, on the mentoring side, platforms like G-Sports, organizations like G-Sport and the caliber of women who are here, very important. You wanted to add on that? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, just to say something about uh, mentorship. Um, it's very important, you know, uh, when I was starting out my journey as a, you know, sports journalist, there are not so many women that I could say, I want to be like her, um, especially in Uganda. Um, globally, yes, but in Uganda, not really. Uh, so now I'm just trying to, uh, you know, in small ways, uh, encourage some young sports journalists, really from across the continent. Um, you know, every first of the month, uh, we, we, we have a conversation, can be on WhatsApp, can be um, uh, on email. I send them a couple of questions and then they, they answer and we set targets for the new month. Then at the end of the month, uh, we, we, we recap really and say, okay, um, how did you fare um, on this front? Uh, how can we move forward to the next level? What are the challenges? Because the challenges of someone in Burundi is completely different from someone in Namibia, completely different with someone in Senegal. Uh, but also completely different with someone in Egypt. So uh, just to understand them and, and also share with, for example, what I've learned here at G-Sport, uh, like, you know, talking to all of you. And, and you know that but we have a, a platform where we keep sharing and talking to all these people that are involved, for example, in women in football in Africa. And, and it's just experiences that, that, that help them to understand because it's intentional. You know, um, it's intentional and, and it gives thought to, okay, so how do I move to the next level? Okay. Um, it's not easy, but uh, we just have to try and, and start the conversation so that, you know, like Mashidi said, uh, it has to be better, you know, from where we've come from, it cannot be the same. Um, maybe seven years down the road, it cannot, it has to be a little bit better. Yeah, you're very right. In terms of saying you as a young and upcoming, you know, um, and a journalist, um, are you finding the mentoring space a little better? I also saw what um, Celine, who is also young, who works for G-Sport, uh, who wrote that beautiful article about you, and she's been writing a lot more. I think she also wrote one about me. She interviewed me some other time. It was amazing. Are you finding that um, uh, platforms like G-Sport, they, they assist you girls in also accessing the rest of us, you know, um, the, the, I'm not going to call myself a big dog. <laughs> Just saying that uh, the rest of the rest of us, the, the experienced people, the old guard, does it help you guys? You know, in terms of accessing that and tapping into that and finding you know, the landscapes a little bit easier and not finding the landmines as dangerous as they would have been in 2009 when some of us arrived on the scene. I think for me, G-Sport has been a great platform in that regard because it's made my life so much easier in terms of getting the numbers for interviews, in terms of speaking to Alzanel for interviews, in terms of speaking to Sismo TDC to, you know, get the numbers that link up, you know, prior to, I mean, um, as we're building up to the, inter, uh, to the World Cup. Um, it's made life so much easier because you now have access to all of these people who have been in the game for years and are doing such amazing work in their respective crafts so to have them um on speed dial if i may makes life so much easier and for me coming into the industry 
um, and having access to such a platform is just like, wow, because the challenges that I go through now, you guys have made it, you know, you guys have crawled so that we can walk, you know? And for you, Litabo, I think you have also played a huge role in that because, yeah, you know, when I came in the industry, it was a bit hectic, <laughs> you know? Um, it wasn't easy, you know, from whew, wanting validation to, you know, waiting for somebody to come and tell you that you actually did a good job on that bulletin, um, to cringing when you make a mistake on air because we're natural, mistakes will happen, um, to wanting to go home and cry and say, oh, Lord, am I in the right industry? Like, what am I doing? You know, I remember there was a time I got home and I told my mom that if you're babes, I, I don't think I can do this. Like, it's hectic. When they say it's a cutthroat industry, it is exactly that. And having you guys around and watching and learning from you guys is just like, the world is literally your oyster. Because I'm four years in and I'm sitting here with award-nominated human beings, women in sport who are doing amazing work. So um, to go back to the G Sport platform, for me to come in in such a short space of time um, and to have achieved what I have achieved, it's not much, but we're getting there. <laughs> um, it's, it's a step in the right direction. And like I said, to have all of you guys on speed dial, and which is courtesy, obviously, of the, the G Sport plat platform and Tasma do, kudos. I have decided that I'm not going to vote for anyone because I know almost all of the nominees in all of the categories, and um, I don't have enough data nor air time to vote for all of them. I'm going to, my vote is this platform that I'm going to give to everybody because that is my vote. So um, I'm going to ask um, 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 Zanela, um, Mbali, I see your message, yes, and I'm going to get to you. Zanela, whilst everybody thinks here of how to, I'm giving you guys at least two minutes as it's, it's, we are wrapping up to say, vote for me, uh, because ultimately there's going to be a winner at the end of the month. So, um, Zanele, I'm going to, as they think about it, and also Mbali, before you, you give us your vote for me, you're going to add on the mentorship um, and mentorship issue. It's very important, and I know you want to talk about it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Zanele now and say, Zanele, this is going to be a virtual ceremony. So, um, you're going to set a standard, like um, G Spot has been setting standards, you know, a trendsetter, just right along as G-Sport is. So what's going through G-Sport right now on how to prepare for the ceremony at the end of the month? So whilst you tell us about that, ladies, I need you to think about how you're going to tell everybody to vote for you here on Team Talk on front right now. Okay, so just to give uh, people clarity as to where things are now. So the public voting is open now from the 1st to the 10th. So it closes on the 10th of, um, of August. So get your votes in for your favorite ladies. And then um, after that, and then it's gonna be an opportunity for um, the finalists to basically to showcase their achievements, uh, put them on, on different platforms, you know, show their, their achievements and, um, and careers, you know, uh, maybe get you more on, on some social media platform, just speaking about what she's done, you know, um, and, and just exposing the Kakulu so that people can get to also interact with, with, the, with the finalists. And then when the and then after that there's going to be a, a virtual ceremony. I must say though that that the voting for the public voting counts 20% of the final vote. Okay, so the judges will make will will vote for the winners, but they definitely take into consideration the public vote. And then um, there's going to be a virtual ceremony. How that is going to play itself out is still a surprise. It's still a surprise. It's going to be so awesome. And um, I mean, Kaz and everybody in the office is running around like headless chickens trying to come up with something spectacular. Because you know, uh, for you, I don't know who was there. I know Mott was there last year, um, but it was, it was, oh, Beautiful. They rolled out the red carpet, you know, as the former minister of sports used to say in Balula, not for fake or plastic. You know, we're not rolling out the, the, the red carpet for fake or plastic. 
So, um, yeah, so Kaz really wants to just take it to, to a next level. So we have to be creative. We have to adapt to the situation of the fact that we can't actually be in one room, dress up, look all pretty and whatever, you know. Um, so I'm also looking forward to seeing what kind of ideas will be, will be, um, will form part of, of the virtual awards. And then on the 31st of August, that's when the winners will be announced. Mali, um, I need you to give us your, your, your mentorship contribution. And then from there, then I'm going to move to Mutsidisi and I'm going to move to, she myself has to vote for me. Uh, I will call it the vote for me. Uh, what was it called, Kana, at the Miss Universe? When, when Zozi won, guys, somebody remind me, the last word, right? Yes, we're going to get to the last word where it's um, vote for me. So. Mbali, you'll be last with the vote for me because we're not going to mix that with your important issue and contribution on mentorship. Please don't say you're going you're gonna to change, you're going to fight for world peace. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make space. That's what Bronte said. You must make space. Something like that. Make space. Something along, something along those lines. Okay. Yeah, no, I really wanted to touch on that mentorship thing because I wanted to expand on what Mutirisi said. Um, Mutirisi actually was one of the people who actually um, mentored me. And I think she still continues to be my mentor, you know. Um, and I will always forever be grateful to her for that because when I was not in the industry yet, I remember when I met her, she was doing a radio interview. Um, at Trans Africa Radio, and uh, I happened to be there because the lady who was the the host was a friend of mine from primary school, and she said, "Look, Mutirisi is coming. I know you. I know you want. Um, I know you love sports. I know you want to be in this industry. So come and meet her." And literally, um, that's where the gates. I think for me, the divine meeting between Mott and I really happened because. I love that Mott asked me all the hard questions because she asked me, why do I want to get into the industry? We all love sports, but why? And I think that was the one thing that um, we tend to forget to ask ourselves. You know, the why do we do the things that we do? Are we, are we, are we coming into the sports industry to make up numbers because there's such a shortage of females? Or are we here to actually make a contribution that is of substance because it's one thing to mentor someone, but you also want to mentor someone who you also feel like also wants to make a change and a contribution to the industry and doesn't want to come in here to just be a pretty face. And then next thing tabloid soccer players, and then done, then the person is just falling through the cracks and is, and is done, you know? Um, I think when we do take people to mentor, we must ask them the hard questions as well, because sometimes you need to decipher people's intentions. And I'm not saying close the door. No, 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 never. But we also want to open the door to make sure that as there are front runners who have already paved the way, who have already created this platform for us for things to become easier, who are people who are credible, who are people of substance. We don't want to come in here, like mess up the work that they've already done. You know, we need to take that baton and take it up a notch to another level. So I think that those are the things for me that are very important because I had a neighbor who, say, who sent me a message after like three years and said, look, I want to get into the sports industry. And I'm always happy to push people in. I send them job opportunities, mentorship opportunities, whatever. But when I ask the questions of why, because someone asked me why, I also take those very same words and I ask, but why? Why do you want to come into this industry? There's so many other industries. Why this one in particular? And she said to me, because there's a shortage of women. So I'm like, so you're coming here to make up numbers. You're not coming here to actually make a contribution. You're not coming here because you're actually passionate about sports. Robert Marawa said to me that passion, is, we were at a press conference and he said to me, passion means that when we leave here, the first thing you want to do is you want to check everything that's been happening 
for the past hour that we've been here because a lot can happen in an hour in sports. No one has to push you to do something. You do it because you love it and you always want to be ahead of the crowd. So it's important that we not only push women and open the door for them in this industry, but it's very important as well that we also push women of substance and who will actually run with the baton and not undo the work that the ladies who are front runners have already done. And that's really what I wanted to say. It's very, very, very important. Thank you, Mali. So it's the last word, all right? Mutsidisi, in two minutes, the last word, um, why you should be voted for. Next will be followed. Mutsidisi, again, is a nominee and a woman in TV. And then we'll follow African woman in sports, Ms. Asha Komukisha, then follows woman in radio nominee, finalist, Chavi Singh Mamabolo, and then our stylish girl, Mbali Sikiti. Uh, before I go there, I wanted to tell you um, why I asked Mbali why. Um, <laughs> I want, because I want, what I want is for young girls to know that it's not just the presenter. That's why yeah. I asked why. They are producers, directors, vision mixers, graphics, um, PAs, the team is big, lighting technicians, audio technicians. Um, there are people working in uh, SCCR. There's, um, you know, people that are taking the feed in to put it on air. There are people who are working in the galleries. There are commentators. It's a whole network of things. It's not just the presenter. And, and your why becomes important because if you have no intangible reason to get up and do what you love, you're not going to go far. If money and material is what is going to be your driver, you're going to quit very easily and very quickly. And you're going to grab opportunities that you're not supposed to grab. Why is important. And it can be whatever you want it to be, but it has to be a standard that you set for yourself that you know, even in your darkest day, it will get you out of bed. Why should you vote for me? <laughs> because I'm really good at my job. And I really love what I do. I love what I do. You know, I walk off set sat. I walk off set tired. And I know that I have given my everything to whoever has been watching or whoever has been listening. And, and my job as your medium between you and the superstars, the analysts, um, the former coaches and former players, it is... It is a platform I feel is of service. I am there to serve you and your interests. I'm there to ask your questions because I have proximity. And I think I do it really well. So yeah, vote for me, women in television. Ashok, yay. <laughs> Those were very, very uh, powerful words from Mods. <laughs> okay, um, so, okay, to answer your question, really, um, I always uh, call myself an African. Um, sometimes people ask me um, where I come from or what tribe I come from. And uh, depending on where they come from, I try to approach them in that manner. That's why I came up with uh, Ngia Bonga, just to <laughs> fit in, you know. Um, but anyway, um, I always try to think about every day that I wake up, I think about Africa as a continent, by the way. I just do everything to celebrate our motherland. I'm such a proud African. And for me, just to tell people to vote for me, it is not only for myself, but also for those other young girls across the African continent that want to um, serve this continent. You know, sometimes people think that it's only the politicians or the economists uh, that contribute to this continent getting better. But even as a sports journalist, I'm trying to do my part, you know. So for me, um, if this, uh, you know, comes to, to, to pass, uh, it would be really an inspiration to every young girl who wants to be a sports journalist. And, and like Mott said, uh, not just uh, in front of television, you, you, it could be for radio, it could be uh, even just social media, you know, uh, using your platform uh, on Twitter, Facebook uh, and Instagram to uh, celebrate the African continent, but more so uh, to lead the space and, and not just to be called a female sports journalist, but to be called the best sports journalist. So for me, that's very important and uh, vote for me if you can. 
Yes, ni abonga. Ntabi saying mama bulo. Yo, why? We are asking, we are answering Muti this question to Mbali, all of us. Why? Why? <laughs> why? Where do I even start, right? Um, I think for me, vote for me because you feel that I deserve it. Vote for me because you, not only because you think I'm a pretty face or you like the way I speak or my accent or whatnot. Vote for me because you enjoy the women in sport content that I give to you every weekend on the weekend favor, 6 to 9 a.m. And that it makes a difference and it changes somebody's life. Vote for me because you believe in the content that I've put in on the national broadcaster. Vote for me because that content is inspiring that young girl at home sitting in the village, to say that girl, it's possible. And if you want to do it, you can do it. Let's get voting. Mbali, again, why? That question comes back to you again. Why? Oh my gosh. Like, I had to be lost after all of that. Ooh, okay. Um, there's two mottos that I live by, right? One of them is um, shortcut, shortcut prosperity is short-lived success. And basically, I, what I mean by that is that you cannot take a shortcut with being prosperous. And expect, and expect to have longevity with your success. That simply means that there is no shortcuts into this industry. You have to work hard. In order for you to have staying power, you've got to put in the work. You've got to grind. You've got to get your nails and your feet dirty. You've got to work and build yourself up and build credibility. And I think with me, I may not be at the level of most of the people in this industry, but one thing I know is that... Um, I worked hard from where I started. Um, I came into this industry with no journalism degree, with no experience whatsoever. But the rate at which I put myself out there to shadow, to get in touch with people who are, who are experienced, even when it was an inconvenience, even if it means borrowing taxi money or petrol money, to go and be there and to show up because I understood that I am building something. I understood that I love development and I wanted to make sure that I cover development because there's something about grassroots level that a lot of people seem to overlook. And I understood the power of starting small because I wanted to make sure my roots are strong. And so as we grow in this industry, um, to date, I have won about five awards in this industry. And that is absolutely amazing because it's the amount of work I put in you know and um the other the other um motto that i live by is be a woman with a story to tell i believe that all of us women um from all over the world the african continent in south africa we all have a different background and a different and unique story to tell and so i believe that um that's something that we must use when we mentor when we empower other women because we are not the same but it's not, we are not our past, nor are we defined by it, but we are defined by the decisions we choose to take moving forward about ourselves. And so for me, I'm saying vote for me because I think that I have tried to live the most authentic and truest expression of who I am in this industry. And I believe that I didn't take shortcuts and I really tried to grind and start at the bottom and work my way up. And so. I say vote for authenticity and vote for being a strong and grounded woman. And that's why I say vote for me. Again, Zanile, <laughs> I am glad like you, I don't have to make a vote. I really am glad that this is my vote. All of you get my vote. So my for, the, for the judges Thank and the public, you. I really do feel sorry because this is only the first edition of a G-Spot uh, a special, G-Spot 15 award special that we're running on Front Runner. There's still more going to come. I really do feel sorry, but ladies, thank you so much. I'm really humbled from the bottom of my heart. I have enjoyed, and I also feel like it's small time. There's so many conversations to have. We just have small time because we're busy, we are under lockdown, we are pandemic, we are, there's, there's so much to speak about, but for each and every one of you for answering my text, for retaining my text, for 
for everything, for the conversations here. And, and importantly, congratulations. Let me tell you, I was one of the, I was shortlisted in the Women in Radio. <laughs> guys, on Saturday. <laughs> I don't know how you guys are going to be feeling moving forward because Saturday morning, I was like, I'm not going to look at my phone. I don't want to, so many incredible women in and, and honestly, I wanna say I'm relieved. I'm not part of this moving forward because it just was a lot of anxiety, but well worth it as well. Congratulations. And um, I wish you all of the best, all of you in everything that you do, not just uh, at the G Sport 15 Awards. And I hope to, speak to you often more not just about the awards but about other things as we build upon you know um enlarging the space uh, that is a uh, woman in sport on the african continent thank you so much enjoy your day and with my orange squash another time thank you so much thank you thank you for having us and have a good afternoon ladies thank you so much ladies we are bonga Goodbye. everybody Bye. 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 You need to learn more phrases, Asha. Like, yes, I'm on it. <laughs>